Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. Well, today we are officially kicking off our series on the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority, the DDA, and joining me is Executive Director Molly Lalone. Welcome, Molly. Hello, Tracy. Hi. Now, if you did not catch our special edition episode on the Lake Orion Lumber Project, you are going to want to go back and watch that one, filled with lots of great information about a really fun project that's coming up. But we're going to go through this series, and we're going to kind of get back to the basics first. And, um, you know, because there might be some people out there who's like, what is the DDA? Like, I I haven't heard of it. I mean, I think it's a little bit hard if you live, you know, in the village or downtown, you know, not to know. But. If you don't or you're curious, like, what did they do? Well, we're going to tell you that today. <laughs> so yes. so we're going to start off. So so what is a DDA? A DDA is a Downtown Development Authority. Okay. And it is a list of properties. Um, the, the authority is made up of properties. And from there, we can redirect taxes. It is not more taxes. It is not less taxes. It's just a redirection. Um, normally taxes go all across the county yep. and instead they're redirected just for um, the village and downtown development. Okay. So so the DDA is a way for local communities such as Lake Orion to make sure that some of the taxes that are already being collected anyway by residents and businesses that those are being redirected Redir- specifically for the community. Coming back into our community so yes. that we can use them for what we think is important, right? Yes. And Village <laughs> Council, back in yeah. 1985, they said, hey, we see a benefit to this. And they approved the DDA. And four times since then, Village Council has approved unanimously. Okay. So um, they come back because, because the DDA is, and I know that the term has, has uh, changed over the years. It's not always exactly set. But- there's a term, right? So the the village council approves the DDA, and it's you know, definitely this many years. There's a beginning date, and there's and an it, end date, right? And so when you say four times, it's not mm-hmm. that it was ever a question. It was just that okay, it now is the time, mm-hmm. village council. What do you want to do? And every time they're like, uh, yes, we want the DDA. <laughs> we want the DDA. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. okay, so. Um, Now, you were mentioning to me before about, like, so it's a state law. Like, that is Mm -hmm. how these taxes are able to to come, right, Mm -hmm. back in. So this isn't just something that, you know, you found a little loophole around. Like, there's a state law, and that's what really makes a a DDA. um, I mean, it's not only do you do so much for the community, but being able to make sure that, you know, we're focusing our funds on our community. Yes. And I want to tell you, it makes a huge difference in the state of Michigan. I I didn't, I wasn't born here. Um, I was born somewhere else. And um, the difference between um, what we see in other states and what we have just because we're here is so different. And I think, I really believe that the difference is the attention that has been given to the downtowns. Yeah. And it's um it's so pleasant to come and visit. It's so charming. Michigan is so charming. Yes. Um and that's it, and it's not the same story everywhere. And it's not like we're younger or newer. It's this program that makes a difference. Yes. Oh, it's and we're so glad that you're here. So what are some of the things that the DDA does? We do some pretty hefty um infrastructure projects that change the character of our downtown and help it stay healthy. We did the streetscape where we kind of added um the the side, the bump outs on the sidewalks, and we've put in um, signage so that it's recognizable and you can see where you need to go. Yeah. Um, we um, last year we just finished um, fixing all the lamp posts. We had a situation where, um, as our lights were getting older, they were kind of gradually dimming. So yeah, yeah. the light was still there, but it was it just felt dark downtown. Yeah, it didn't do a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, it felt dark. dark. Yeah. So so we were able to increase um, the lighting by 50%. So now okay. it feels pretty good down there. Yeah. And we were able to get um, dark sky compliance, which means we no longer contribute to the light pollution okay. in this area. So we're becoming green and we're improving the downtown. And- Absolutely. <laughs> so- yes. And for 
those of you who like to bike and run and walk, um, you, know, you know how you can go from uh, Rochester to Lake Orion and yeah. back again? Well, uh, we were responsible for that little, little tiny space um, that we had a little section where you could not get into downtown Lake Orion right. on that trail, and now you can. Yes. And that was, we um, we have it going behind the Lake Orion Lumber Yard to Meeks Park and then um, over by the Arts Center. Yes. And then we, and then because we had a bike trail, we also <laughs> added some more bike parking to make sure that everyone had a place to put their bikes safely. Yes. Well, and, and I want to say too, with that um, Paint Creek Trail extension, that, yeah. that piece, that was mm-hmm. many years in the making. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people don't understand is that it's not as simple as, oh, well, let's just add in, you know, and extend the path. Mm-hmm. No, there are so many different um, groups and organizations. And then, you know, the Lake Warrior Lumber Yard, they were so generous to to donate and, like, mm-hmm. say, yes, you can use the back of our property. Yes. There's so many different pieces that many of the projects, the DDA, like, is planning and working on for many years. But so many yes. years. And now look at the benefit. Like, that it's is just like Hollywood movie so stars, amazing. Tracy. Yeah. They, they say, yeah, <laughs> yep, I've been in the business for 30 years, and now I'm overnight and overnight success. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> and it's exactly the same thing. Yeah. You have to make little changes continually over a long period of time, and then bang, and things the, yeah, happen. It and just look, seems like, yeah. And it looks like it was effortless. <laughs> right, And yeah. really, there was a lot of work involved, and it took a long time. Yes. And, and, and yeah, that trail, it took a lot of planning to get that trail going. Yeah. And uh, same thing with this um, property. We're really doing a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that we're going to be able to provide what people want. Yeah, for the, Lake Orion for the Lake Orion Lumberyard Project. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think, like, um, there's such a correlate, you know, if, if people could look back, and even the streetscape. And, mm-hmm. and, I mean, there's probably people watching this or that are newer to Lake Orion that don't even remember what the downtown was like before the streetscape Mm -hmm. project like those pavers like the extra space like just the trees the you know the way the trees are the lighting like we didn't have all that the nice signs throughout the downtown like there's so much that has just really you know things that you might look at and think, oh, this is really nice, mm-hmm. but not realize it wasn't realize always, it that, wasn't way. always yeah. that way. Yeah. Right. So right. and being responsive, we um, there's there's a long term aspect and there's also a very responsive aspect during the pandemic when all of the businesses had to shut down. The village and the DDA worked so hard to make mm-hmm. sure that we very quickly had outdoor spaces where people could be yeah. so that they could um, have commerce and they could be social. Right. Um, we were the first um, community in Southeast Michigan to create a social district. And if you're not familiar with a social district, that means that you can yeah. grab your favorite beverage from a restaurant and then take it outside and walk all over downtown and enjoy yourself. Yes. And we were the first ones to in in this area to get one of those. It's no to, longer just in Key West and you yes, know the, in, those in places New Orleans, and yeah. Lake Orion. We have a social district. Yes. Yes. So. yes. And we had um, during the pandemic we had a we called them festival warming hubs and yep. they were fire pits yes. and you could yep. go over and you could have your social district drink and you could say hi to your neighbors socially distanced yeah. in a safe way <laughs> and just enjoy yourselves this community has always been so social yes. and and it was that was actually one of the aspects that we needed to um help protect yes um during that yeah. time it was so <laughs> that became so important here in lake orion we worked um, hard to make sure that we could still have our events yeah. in a safe way. I mean, we did we did a lot of things that um, many communities could not do, right? Um, and maybe didn't need to do, but we needed to do we, it. We we do here. yes. <laughs> we we are very social, and we yeah. do we need that connection and that yeah. that social aspect. Yeah. And yeah, it's part of what makes our our community so great. So <laughs> so yeah. You, so the DDA is responsive. It works on long term projects. You know, projects are not just things like the Paint Creek Trail Extension or the Lake Warren Lumberyard Project, but um, I know there are things like facade grants, right? Like mm-hmm. when you talk about helping to preserve the history of Lake Orion, that is something that is very important to the DDA is preserving the, you know, the history and even like trying to do as much as possible to, you know, that architecture. And because we mm-hmm. have some really cool buildings and houses and yeah. So there, there's support for those projects as well. Yeah, and the so. facade grant um, is not only to help owners um, maintain or improve their buildings. It's also there's a design aspect involved. And we, um, we encourage them um, through that funding 
to uh, talk to a historic design architect. Yeah. Um, so when they are looking at the changes that they need to make, they've, they've been looked at by an historic architect and they've made some recommendations. So we actually, we don't want to harm by improving things. We want to enhance by improving things. And right. um, that's one of the reasons we have that facade grant. Yeah, it's a great, I, I, I love it. I think there's so much character and I, I love that, that that aspect is incorporated into the new development as well. So so that's just a little bit about the DDA and who, you know, who the DDA is and what it does. We have three more episodes where we're going to dive in a little bit deeper. So um, stay tuned. Next week, we're going to talk about the DDA and its funding. Where does it come from? How does the tax capture work? So if you've ever been curious or had some questions or maybe you're hearing some mixed things about how that works, you're going to want to tune in for this episode. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Molly. And we'll see you next week on Tea with Tracy.